Question 1. What are the pros and cons of graph database? Answer. Pros. Graph databases seem to be tailor-made for networking applications. The prototypical example is a social network, where nodes represent users who have various kinds of relationships to each other. Modeling this kind of data using any of the other styles is often a tough fit, but a graph database would accept it with relish. They are also perfect matches for an object-oriented system. Cons. Because of the high degree of interconnection connectedness between nodes, graph databases are generally not suitable for network partitioning. Graph databases don't scale out well. Question 2. What is impedance mismatch in database terminology? Answer. It is the difference between the relational model and the in-memory data structures. The relational data model organizes data into a structure of tables and rows, or more properly, relations and tuples in the relational model. A tuple is a set of name-value pairs and a relation is a set of tuples. All operations in SQL consume and return relations, which leads to the mathematically elegant relational algebra. This foundation on relations provides a certain elegance and simplicity, but it also introduces limitations. In particular, the values in a relational tuple have to be simple, they cannot contain any structure, such as a nested record or a list. This limitation isn't true for in-memory data structures, which can take on much richer structures than relations. As a result, if you want to use a richer in-memory data structure, you have to translate it to a relational representation to store it on disk. Hence the impedance mismatch, two different representations that require translation. Question 3. What is polyglot persistence? In NoSQL? Answer. In 2006, Neil Ford coined the term polyglot programming, to express the idea that applications should be written in a mix of languages to take advantage of the fact that different languages are suitable for tackling different problems. Complex applications combine different types of problems, so picking the right language for each job may be more productive than trying to fit all aspects into a single language. We use the term polyglot persistence to define this hybrid approach to persistence. Question 4. Say something about aggregate-oriented databases? Answer. An aggregate is a collection of data that we interact with as a unit. Aggregates form the boundaries for asset operations with the database. Key value, document, and column family databases can all be seen as forms of aggregate-oriented database. Aggregates make it easier for the database to manage data storage over clusters. Question 5. What is the key difference between replication and sharding? Answer. Replication takes the same data and copies it over multiple nodes. Sharding puts different data on different nodes. Sharding is particularly valuable for performance because it can improve both read and write performance. Using replication, particularly with caching, can greatly improve read performance but does little for applications that have a lot of writes. Sharding provides a way to horizontally scale. Question 6. Explain about Cassandra NoSQL. Answer. Cassandra is an open-source scalable and highly available NoSQL distributed database management system from Apache. Cassandra claims to offer fault-tolerant linear scalability with no single point of failure. Cassandra sits in the column family NoSQL camp. The Cassandra data model is designed for large-scale distributed data and trades asset-compliant data practices for performance and availability. Cassandra is optimized for very fast and highly available writes. Cassandra is written in Java and can run on a vast array of operating systems and platform. 7. Explain how Cassandra writes. Answer. Cassandra writes first to a commit log on disk for durability then commits to an in-memory structure called a mem table. A write is successful once both commits are complete. Writes are batched in memory and written to disk in a table structure called an SS table. Sorted string table. Mem tables and SS tables are created per column family. With this design Cassandra has minimal disk I.O. and offers high-speed write performance because the commit log is a only and Cassandra doesn't seek on writes. In the event of a fault when writing to the SS table Cassandra can simply replay the commit log. 
Question 8. Explain Cassandra data model. Answer. The Cassandra data model has four main concepts which are cluster, key space, column, column family. Clusters contain many nodes, machines, and can contain multiple key spaces. A key space is a namespace to group multiple column families, typically one per application. A column contains a name, value, and timestamp. A column family contains multiple columns referenced by a row keys. Question 9. What is Flume? Answer. Flume is an open-source software program developed by CloudEra that acts as a service for aggregating and moving large amounts of data around a Hadoop cluster as the data is produced or shortly thereafter. Its primary use case is the gathering of log files from all the machines in a cluster to persist them in a centralized store such as HDFS. In Flume, we create data flows by building up chains of logical nodes and connecting them to sources and sinks. For example, say we wish to move data from an Apache access log into HDFS. You create a source by tailing access log and use a logical node to route this to an HDFS sync. Question 10. What are the modes of operation that Flume supports? Answer. Flume supports three modes of operation, single node, pseudo distributed, and fully distributed. Single node is useful for basic testing and getting up and running quickly. Pseudo distributed is a more production-like environment that lets us build more complicated flows while testing on a single physical machine. Fully distributed is the mode that run in for production. The fully distributed mode offers two further sub-modes, a standard alone mode with a single master and a distributed mode with multiple masters. Question 11. What is Hive? Answer. Hive can be thought of as a data warehouse infrastructure for providing summarization, query and analysis of data that is managed by Hadoop. Hive provides a SQL interface for data that is stored in Hadoop, and it implicitly converts queries into MapReduce jobs so that the programmer can work at a higher level than he or she would when writing MapReduce jobs in Java. Hive is an integral part of the Hadoop ecosystem that was initially developed at Facebook and is now an active Apache open source project. Question 12. What is Impala? Answer. Impala is a SQL query system for Hadoop from Cloudera. The Cloudera positions Impala as a real-time query engine for Hadoop and by real-time, they imply that rather than running batch-oriented jobs like with MapReduce, we can get much faster query results for a certain types of queries using Impala over an SQL-based front-end. It does not rely on the MapReduce infrastructure of Hadoop. Instead, Impala implements a completely separate engine for processing queries. So this engine is a specialized distributed query engine that is similar to what you can find in some of the commercial pattern related databases. So in essence it bypasses MapReduce. Question 13. What is Big SQL? Answer. Big Data is a culmination of numerous research and development projects at IBM. So IBM has taken the work from these various projects and released it as a technology preview called Big SQL. IBM claims that Big SQL provides robust SQL support for the Hadoop ecosystem. It has a scalable architecture. It supports SQL and data types available in SQL 92. Plus it has some additional capabilities. It supports JDBC and ODBC client drivers it has efficient handling of point queries. Question 14. How Big SQL works? Answer. The Big SQL engine analyzes incoming queries. It separates portions to execute at the server versus the portions to be executed by the cluster. It rewrites queries if necessary for improved performance, determines the appropriate storage handle for data, produces the execution plan and executes and coordinates the query. Question 15. What is Data Wizard? Answer. A Data Wizard is someone who can consistently derive money out of data, e.g. working as an employee, consultant or in an other capacity, by providing value to clients or extracting value for himself, out of data. Even a guy who designs statistical models for sport bets, and use his strategies for himself alone, is a Data Wizard, rather than knowledge. What makes a Data Wizard successful is craftsmanship, intuition and vision, to compete with peers who share the same knowledge but lack these other skills.
Question 16. What is Apache HBase? Answer. Apache HBase is an open source Columna database built to run on top of the Hadoop distributed file system, HDFS. Hadoop is a framework for handling large datasets in a distributed computing environment. HBase is designed to support high table update rates and to scale out horizontally in distributed compute clusters. Its focus on scale enables it to support very large database tables e.g. ones containing billions of rows and millions of columns. Question 17. List out the features of Big SQL. Answer. IBM claims that Big SQL provides robust SQL support for the Hadoop ecosystem. It has a scalable architecture. It supports SQL and data types available in SQL 92. Plus it has some additional capabilities. It supports JDBC and ODBC client drivers. It has efficient handling of point queries. And we'll get to what that means. There are a wide variety of data sources and file formats for HDFS and HBASE that it supports, and it, although is not open source, it does interoperate well with the open source ecosystem within Hadoop. Question 18. List some drawbacks and limitations associated with Hive. Answer. The SQL syntax that Hive supports is quite restrictive. So for example, we are not allowed to do subqueries, which is very very common in the SQL world. There is no windowed aggregates, and also ANSI joins are not allowed. And in the SQL world there are a lot of other joins that the developers are used to which we cannot use with Hive. The other restriction that is quite limiting is the data types that are supported, for example when it comes to varchar support or decimal support, Hive lacks quite severely when it comes to client support the JDBC and the ODBC drivers are quite limited and there are concurrency problems when accessing Hive using these client drivers. Question 19. What is RSS, Rich Site Summary? Answer. RSS, Rich Site Summary, originally RDF Site Summary, often called really simple syndication, uses a family of standard web feed formats to publish frequently updated information, blog entries, news headlines, audio, video. An RSS document, called feed, web feed, or channel, includes full or summarized text, and metadata, like publishing date and author's name. RSS is purely a semi structured, unstructured document data. Question 20. List some benefits of Impala. Answer. One of the key ones is low latency for executing SQL queries on top of Hadoop. And part of this has to do with bypassing the MapReduce infrastructure which involves significant overhead, especially when starting and stopping JBMs. Clouder also claims several magnitudes of improvement in performance compared to executing the same SQL queries using Hive. Another benefit is that if we really wanted to look under the hood at what Clouder has provided in Impala or if we wanted to tinker with the code, the source code is available for you to access and download.